the Holy Spirit speaks to us concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. If we ignore his voice, our hearts will increasingly grow hard and unyielding until they are no longer sensitive to God's word or the desires of the Spirit. Commitment to truth and to righteous living will no longer be a priority, but we will more and more seek pleasure in the ways of the world rather than God's ways. The Holy Spirit warns us that God will not go on pleading with us indefinitely if we harden our hearts in rebellion. There is a point of no return. This is a quote coming to you from Life in the Spirit Study Bible. Now in this broadcast, we are continuing our new series entitled A Glimpse into Hebrews. And in this teaching, we will continue on in our study of Hebrews while highlighting certain verses or passages characteristic of this book. Today, our main text will be found in Hebrews 3, verses 7 through 8, which says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. Now, uh, before getting into this message, we want to look at the fact that Paul, who I believe is the writer of Hebrews, that in this passage, Hebrews 3, verses 7 through 8, he is referring back to Psalm 95, verses 7 through 8. 7 to 11 uh, uh, is generally, but specifically Psalm 95, verses 7 through 8. Listen to what it says. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. This is what the psalmist had written in Psalm 95. And these words originally were a warning to Israel not to provoke God, lest they should be excluded from the rest which he had promised them. Now this quotation from Psalm 95, 7 through 11, what it's doing there is it summarizes the inglorious history of Israel under Moses' leadership. And the historical context that we see here is that this was a time after Israel's miraculous rescue from Egypt, going into when they were tested in the wilderness. Now, at this time, Israel had seen so many signs and wonders from God. And those signs and wonders were intended to encourage them to trust God. But contrary to what would seem logical, they turned against Moses and God. Instead, what they did was they tested God's patience. So we have here the example of Israel under Moses, 40 years in the wilderness after departing from Egypt. And the psalmist warns Israel of his day against unbelief and disobedience. And he cites this wilderness experience as an example to avoid. And then we go over to the New Testament in Hebrews 3, where Paul cites this very same scripture passage. And he uses it to speak to the Hebrew Christians of his day. He said, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. Now, this is the second 
of five great warnings in the book of Hebrews. The first one we dealt with in a previous pro uh, podcast where we dealt with uh, the warning concerning neglect. And we found that scripture that we dealt with was Hebrews 2.1 where it said, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. This was an exhortation to earnest attention, to give God's word our earnest attention, earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest we should let them slip or we would drift away from them. And Everett Feuerbach uh, a Bible teacher in his commentary made this statement, this reaction. The currents of the world are strong. Therefore, by earnestness, devotion, and resolution, we should determine not to be swept away from our Christian convictions, confessions, and hopes. For most Christians, the danger is not one of plunging back into sin but of drifting without noticing it back into the world. Very few would deliberately turn their backs upon God and go into sin. Rather, it is a day-by-day -day experience of slipping farther and farther away from the Lord Jesus. So we see in Hebrews 3, 7 through 8, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. This brings us to the second of five great warnings in the book of Hebrews. The first one, as we mentioned, concerned neglect. This one warns against doubt and by recalling the rebellion and judgment of Israel. Paul is doing that when he says, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. He's recalling the rebellion and the judgment of Israel. And he's making it clear to, that to the Hebrew Christians that you too stand in danger of God's judgment of, and wrath if you don't today hear the voice of God and respond to it. He's telling them, take warning from the fate of Israel, seeing that God is faithful. Be sure that you are not found unfaithful. So this second exhortation is against doubt, but it's also against hardening the heart. And we're seeing that there is a relationship between drifting and hardening. Drifting precedes and tends toward hardening. Drifting, you just don't pay attention. You let it slip away. But here is the fact that you reject it. You don't believe, you doubt God's word, and it leads to hardening, which is a more dangerous state. Paul cautions the Hebrew Christians against hardening their hearts, turning a deaf ear to the calls and counsels of Christ. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. He says here, the Holy Spirit says, today, 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 do it now. What God is saying, do it now, presently, without delay, at the very time the command is addressed to you. Today, the time set for hearing these things is today, not tomorrow. Every command of Christ bears the date of today. If a thing is right, do it at once. If a thing is wrong, stop it immediately. Whatever you are bound to do, 
do it now, at the very time the command is addressed to you, it is not to be put off until tomorrow. The family Bible note said this, Today, if you will hear his voice, the command of God is always today, for he always demands present obedience. What is God uh, commanding you to do? He's saying, do it today. Obey me today. The People's New Testament Commentary said, So today and ever, God wishes us to hear him today, not tomorrow. Charles Spurgeon said this, A very large proportion of mankind you will find delight in dwelling upon the word tomorrow. Oh, what will they not do tomorrow? Sin shall be rejected tomorrow. The Savior shall be sought tomorrow. They will pray tomorrow. They will serve God tomorrow. Alas, of all the nets of Satan as a fowler for the souls of men, perhaps there is none in which he takes more than in this big net of procrastination. Barnes notes said this, all God's commands relate to the present, to this day, to the passing moment. He gives us no commands about the future. He does not require us to repent and to turn to him tomorrow or ten years hence. The reasons are obvious. Then Jameson Fawcett Brown commentary said, Tomorrow is the day when idle men work and fools repent. Tomorrow is Satan's today. He cares not what good resolutions you form if only you fix them for tomorrow. And then Everett Fjordback said, The word of Satan and the world is tomorrow. But remember, delay always hardens the heart. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. Today, if you will hear his voice, the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice, you will hear obediently, with attention, with faith. In the Hebrew, going back to Psalm 95, it's so emphatic. These words are so emphatic. It's at what's actually being said here is, Oh, that you would hearken to his voice. You see, there are many voices in the world today, many voices that are vying for your attention. But the only voice that you should be listening to or caring about is the voice of God. What is God saying to you today? What is he speaking to you today? If you will hear his voice. And one commentator said, what an if is here. There are many ifs in the Bible, but this is one of the most important ones. If you will hear his voice. Do you hear his voice today? Jesus said, my sheep, hear my voice. Are you hearing God's voice today? The voice of God demands your serious attention. Your attention should be without delay. And you need to be cautious not to adopt a conduct which will prevent your attention to this admonition. Today, if you will hear, that word here is linked in with obedience. If you will hear internally so as to understand it, approve of it, attend to it, believe it, love it, put it into practice what you are hearing. If you will hear his voice, his voice speaking in his written word, in the gospel being preached, in your own conscience, in the events of providence, and the admonitions of friends and relatives. 
today if you will hear his voice. Now many do not hear the voice of God, and there are many causes for that. First of all, because they are far off from God, or they are spiritually deaf. They are spiritually asleep. They turn their heads aside. They stop their ears. They hurry away to avoid hearing God, or they are spiritually dead. The Believer's Bible Commentary said, Whenever God speaks, we should be swift to hear. Are you swift to hear when God speaks to you? To doubt his word is to call him a liar and to incur his wrath. Barnes notes that whatever conveys to us the truth of God or is adapted to impress that on us may be regarded as his voice speaking to us. He thus speaks to us every day in some of these ways, and every day, therefore, he may entreat us not to harden our hearts. And this leads us into our next part. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. Harden not your hearts. In other words, don't tell God no. Don't say no to God. What is he saying to you today? What is he calling you to do? Don't tell him no. Harden not your hearts. That word harden in the Greek is skleruno, and it means to make hard or stiff, to render stubborn. Don't harden your hearts. Don't uh, render your hearts stubborn before God, before his voice, before his commands, what he's saying to you. And we ask, well, what does it mean to harden the heart? Well, just to give you an idea what it means to harden the heart, you refuse to listen to the voice of God. You resist his appeals. You set yourself against the truth. You continually resist the divine will, whereby his word and his spirit no longer exert any influence upon you. You disobey the voice of God and you act in accordance with your own desires. That's what it means to harden your heart. Well, how do you know if you have a heart? Or a hardened heart. It's where the conscience is seared and insensible. It's where truth makes no impression on you anymore. It's where there's no spiritual effect is produced by affliction. It's where the, your, the preaching is listened to without interest. You're dull to the things of God to the word of God being preached. You feel dull. You feel like a stone. You're not moved. Where your mind is unaffected by the appeals of friends. That is what it means to harden your heart. In closing, now in Hebrews 2, we were admonished not to neglect the things which we had heard, lest we should let them slip or pass by us. In a sense, we were also admonished not to drift back into the world while slipping farther and farther away from the Lord Jesus. Now, in Hebrews 3, Paul admonishes us not to doubt don't doubt God's word. Don't doubt his promises. Don't doubt his power as Israel did in the wilderness. Paul says, he's admonishing us not to doubt, which causes you to turn a deaf ear to the calls and counsels of Christ, which then leads to produce a more dangerous state that is the hardening of your heart. You doubt 
And when you doubt, then you start having this deaf ear to, to God's calls to you. And that produces the hardening of the heart. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Things did not go well for Israel when they hardened their hearts. Neither will it go well for you if you do the same. Our time is up for today's broadcast, but I encourage you stay tuned for our next teaching as we continue our study of the theme, A Glimpse into Hebrews. This is Connie Giordano with Walking in Truth Ministry, praying that you will walk in the truth every day of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>